back to markyellow.com. I'm Abhijit and with me is Mark himself. A common problem that we face when we're traveling, Mark, is trying to fit all of the gear that we want to fly with into our bags and still stay under the seven kilo limit that a lot of airlines impose. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe you have a bit of a solution. Yeah, it's one of the uh, reasons that first attracted me to the uh, the A7 mirrorless cameras is uh, it was getting increasingly difficult as airlines lowered some of their carry-on limits from 10 now down to 7 for most airlines is how we um, take uh, a good variety of gear that covers us on a commercial shoot when we're traveling. Um, I don't like checking um, gear into the check luggage. Uh, I've had uh, bad experiences of that. I've... Uh, check three kilos uh, when I was over on a side flight that was down to seven. And uh, that was the last time I saw those three kilos. I'm really averse as well to checking in expensive bits of yeah. equipment and things I've honestly done in the past is hide things on my own person. So I'd wear a jacket and yeah. stick things in the pocket or wear cargo pants and load up the pockets <laughs> in there yeah. or have a bag that's actually quite heavy but pretend yeah. it's really light. Yeah, that, that's uh, obviously that's a little bit of a photographer's trick. I was once attracted to a movie about how you do pack down seven kilos and uh, it was a bit of a ruse really because uh, the only thing it included was how to get a 70 to 200 lens in your trouser pocket. <laughs> Not the most practical way to fly. <laughs> no, I think, uh, and I think, it. Um, I mean, more and more airlines now are weighing and just just checking you know we're on on um, flights that are fully booked you'll see the scales come out the worst thing that happens is when they start weighing um, at the checkout uh, the checking not the checking gate but uh the gate that you then go to board the when you're aircraft. boarding the aircraft yeah and uh um that's uh basically fines are just waiting uh, down down the track there um obviously giving you uh, so much uh, fine per kilo over and, and I've, I've had eye-watering fines um, mm. when I've tried to travel with way too many lenses. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Verge of tears. Yeah. So uh, seven kilos uh, is, uh, is something that I've um, been trying to work towards without having to put the lenses in the pockets. And I've got a couple of solutions to this now. I've got a, um, I've got a wheelie uh, bag. The first wheelie uh, carry-on that I owned was actually three and a half kilos which was crazy because that just means you've only got three and a half kilos. You can't even fill the bag. Oh. So, um, so I bought a, um, a, um, a bag that weighs 0 0.9 kilo. Wow. And uh, that's really good kilo, for carrying yeah. gear. But uh, another thing that's attractive, uh, attractive to me if I am walking about and, and uh, need to uh, uh, get a bag back to a hotel room, I'll still go for the traditional backpack. It's not something that I like to work out of. Uh, I t typically like to work with a shoulder bag now. We've done a shoulder bag review or yep. two. Uh, I currently use uh, an owner um, Brixton bag for that. But I'll generally what I'll do is I'll get all of the gear in this seven kilo bag and then decant maybe to three or four kilos for walking about, doing maybe doing some street or landscape and just swap and change the lenses out as I need it. But this uh, bag I've had for a while, this uh, goes back to when I was carrying uh, DSLRs, uh, and I'll still use it to move a, a large amount of my mirrorless stuff. Sure. So we've, weighed, we've yep. weighed this bag, haven't we? It's we have. Seven kilos yep. on the money. Yes, and we'll bring it up on the screen so everyone can have um, a look. The only thing that isn't in this bag, although it does take it, is, uh, is a 13-inch MacBook Air. Which, of course, many airlines allow you to carry yeah. A, yeah. a laptop either within the bag and not count it or just yeah. in your hand in your hand that's right um, and so um, so this this seven kilos doesn't include the MacBook Air that would push it out to uh, about eight if I was to put that in the bag but it includes everything else so I just thought I'd uh, it's it's um, this is a Benro bag uh, we'll put a link uh, to this bag if uh, if you uh, like the look of this particular backpack as I said I don't like working from um, the back uh, I just think it just gives too much difficult access to your lenses, you know, sure. constantly taking the bag off and on. And if you walk a couple of steps away from your bag in, in some regions of the world, that's, you know, that's probably yep. not, you're not going to see that gear again. Too much of a temptation. So one of, th one of the reasons that I attracted me to this bag is you've got, um, you've got a pocket there for carrying one of the larger tripods there and strap mechanisms for um, carrying that on the back so the tripod doesn't have to go in the bag. Okay, we've got um, a side pocket here uh, that gives you um, quick access uh, to your camera. 
Okay, so this uh, side pocket down in here will give me access to uh, my camera. I used to be able to get the camera out of the bag without taking the backpack off uh, my back. It also had uh, another way of accessing the, cam uh, the bag from the back here, another access point um, which allows you to get into the uh, rear pocket here. It's quite a lot of straps on a backpack, isn't it? It's very annoying. Um, but you can actually get in and uh, retrieve a lens from the bag, again, without having to go into the main compartment. Okay. Um, there's some other things, you know, the um, typical advantages of carrying a large amount of weight on these bags is obviously the, uh, the waist strap here. There's a rain pocket in here. There's a drinks um, uh, a bag that comes out so you can carry your drinks. A uh, bottle without putting that in the bag as well. Sure. Um, but and I know this one is quite quite a bit of capacity within it, and I know yeah. you travel sometimes with a messenger bag yeah. actually inside yeah. this one. So when That's you're right. on location, yeah. you can use the messenger bag instead of the yeah. backpack. Yeah, I wouldn't probably. I'd probably have to check the uh, the owner messenger bag that is my favourite at the moment. But I've got a very light. Um, uh, low pro low pro messenger bag which uh, is as has the high side so you can put a, a very long lens in or a small a short tripod in that uh, high side so but it weighs nothing and uh, absolutely packs flat so that could go in here if necessary yep. well mark let's cut to the quick yep. we've made a tall claim about fitting yep. seven kilos worth of equipment okay so let's have a look what's inside the bag how yep. much equipment would seven kilo allow us to travel okay. with okay so uh so obviously uh, we've got the uh, we've got an A7R2 here uh, with a 55 mil lens. 55 1.8, obviously a cracking lens. Uh, this one allows you to photograph in really low light. The only lens that I might uh, swap and change that out for is the um, 35 2.8, which is even smaller and lighter than this one. Uh, that gives you an advantage, and not as bright as this 1.8. Uh, but really sharp lens, and so uh, a street shooter might swap that 55 out for a 35. 35 yeah. Sure. Okay, so we've got um, uh, got a 90 mil macro here. Okay, this is a, a particularly favourite. Uh, it's a wide aperture again, 2.8, 90 mil. Does the macro, but I also use it for shooting uh, shallow depth of uh, portraits. Um, shallow depth of field portraits and uh, this has been tested as uh, the sharpest lens uh, on DxO and uh, really you know it's a cracking lens and it's got a little bit of um, throw there for uh, a short telephoto so that, that makes a nice complement for the 55 when we need to go a little bit longer and a little bit tighter on those head and shoulder portraits. Oh, mm. A lot of people when they're traveling yeah. carry lots of zooms with them yeah. to cut down on the number of lenses yeah. but both the lenses you've got in there are primes. Primes, yes. And um, um, interestingly, uh, you know, some people might swap a lens out like this for uh, 2470. Uh, the 2470 is a little bit lighter than this one, so that would give you the advantage if you don't want uh, a 90 mil prime in your bag. You could swap that out for the 2470 if you're constantly changing um, uh, focal length. Uh, I actually uh, really like some of the primes, and so um, I do have a couple of zooms in the bag though. In more case, lenses. More lenses, yes. More lenses. We've got um, a 1635 zoom wow. there because uh, that is my um, the, the go-to lens for um, uh, landscape and architecture. And uh, that's a, a cracking lens, another Carl Zeiss lens, this one. Um, and um, as I said, mostly at the 16 mil end. Uh, if you were looking at saving even more weight, you could possibly use um, a non-Sony lens. Uh, there's uh, some cracking uh, really wide full frame lenses out there now that perform really well on the A7R2. Really good um, corner performance there. Um, one of the ones that's getting a lot of reviews at the moment is the 15mm uh, uh, Voigtlander Helia 3. And uh, that goes is a really nice complement for this camera. Um, and again, that would be another weight saving um, device there. Great. Mm. Okay, another zoom. And uh, you can see we've got quite a lot of here. This is that's, that is a staggering <laughs> amount of lenses to be yeah, traveling yeah. in a bag that only is supposed to this, be seven kilos. Yeah, and that includes the bag. So uh, that's incredible. The first thing to do is weigh the bag because uh, a lot of people um, lose a kilo or two in just the ba their choice of bag. Um, some some um, bags in camera stores are marketed as camera bags, but oh, th you know, as I said, over three and a half kilos, sometimes four kilos, just for the bag. That is certainly a trap yeah. that new players need to look out for, yeah. where the bag itself. Yeah. 
So I basically got from uh, 16 to 200 with a couple of really sharp primes in there. As I said, uh, some people might swap one of these primes out for a 2470, but uh, that gives you the flexibility. Uh, not only have I got the cameras in here, um, but um, I do like to travel with a tripod. Now you are going to, if you're going to not check the tripod in your check baggage, you are going to have to make some compromises with a tripod. Are you telling me you've got a tripod inside that bag? I have a tripod Stop. in here. <laughs> and this is it. Look out. Okay, so um, with this tripod, you're not going to be shooting uh, standing up at head height. Obviously, it's a very, very sturdy tripod, but it's very, very short. Yes. It's got some uh, extending legs out here. Let's just lock that in. In fact, we'll lock it all in. We'll stand this little fella up. And so you can see the tripod. You're basically going to be... Um, I'm, I'm going to collapse that centre sure. hole. Look, it's got extending lens, but this is not really to give the tripod height. more height. It's really just to level the tripod sure. on an yeah. uneven ground. But this is a really sturdy tripod. And uh, you can uh, splay the legs even lower if, yep. you, if you need to get even lower to the ground. But basically with a tripod like that, I'm either going to be putting it on um, a tabletop surface in a hotel room or I'm actually get most of the time with a 16 to 35. I'm going to want that foreground in, in the frame anyway. So I'm pretty much going to be sitting on the ground with this tripod. And that's really where the uh, tilt screen of these A7s come into its own because I don't have to put my head on the ground, I just have to sit on the ground. Sure. And uh, but certainly a tripod like that, a quote unquote serious photographer mm -hmm. would scoff at the idea of shooting yeah. on at such a diminutive, such an <laughs> unassuming little <laughs> tripod. Yeah. But as you and I have found, yeah. the smaller tripods are not to be dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we might dedicate a separate clip just about talking yeah. about the, that's right. the strengths of these tripods. Look, um, there's a little bit more in here, but that's basically the bulk of the gear. You're always going to have to factor in uh, a little kit. I usually put them in one of these see-through bags so I can just check what I've got there. That's basically um, um, power leads, um, a, a spare charger, I've got a, an external drive, it's something um, like this. I think a lot of photographers carry these now. This is um, basically a, a card wallet, which I've also got batteries in here. Some people complain. This is a Manfrotto one you've got Yeah, this hand. is a Manfrotto. This actually came with a Manfrotto jacket. It was a, it was a freebie. Uh, look, as I said, there's a lot of makes of these, but um, typically uh, I take enough cards when I'm traveling. You can see I've got a full array of large capacity cards there. I'm generally not going to reformat my cards when I'm traveling. Uh, I'll uh, reformat them when I get back home. Sure. And that is uh, trying to keep um, um, multiple copies of the files that I'm capturing, obviously on that uh, MSATA, but also on the cards themselves. And as you can see, I've got a, a full array of uh, batteries charged, ready to go there. Okay, so... Uh, well, wait, there's more. <laughs> That's a rocket blower. <laughs> yeah, obviously you're going to have to take a little bit of cleaning equipment with you as well. And uh, obviously that uh, doesn't weigh much, but that's all in the bag. Look, you know, there's a little bit of opportunity here just to rejig uh, the lens configuration, saving some weight perhaps on maybe the 90mm macro where you could get in, um, you know, uh, an ND filter pack and, uh, and still be under the 7. But some of those things do go in the pockets um, because they're small and light. And so I think this is, uh, it's, this not, might not be everybody's um, configuration, but it just shows you how much gear you can actually get and still stay um, under the 7. A, quite a, an astounding array of equipment, um, lots of permutations and combinations mm -hmm. to be had, and all coming in well within that 7 kilo limit. Thank you.